That stinks. Can you smell that? Ew. Gross. I'll tell you about it later, so stick around. I'm building a 112 scale model of a Sears kit house, which Sears Roebuck sold approximately 100 years ago. Customers would order the houses and they would be shipped in pieces by rail. The customers would put them together themselves and save money. It's estimated that Sears sold 70,000 of these kit homes between 1908 and 1942 in 370 different designs. Customers would assemble the houses themselves, which took about three months. I'll be working on the scale model a little later in this video, but first, I want to show you what school was like 100 years ago. So come on, we don't want to be late for class. If you've been following along, you know that I've been talking about the village of Claiborne in the last couple of videos. Check it out. I'll leave the links in the description for you. This is the Claiborne Schoolhouse built in 1907 that I talked about in the previous video. On average in 1910, school enrollment between 5 and 19 year olds was 59.2%. Today, 93% of the people between 25 and 30 in the United States have at least a high school diploma. Most teachers were young single females and the gender divide led teachers to having an overall lower salary compared to other professions. The curriculum included English literature, grammar, social studies, Studies, physical education and music. In rural areas, schools had only one classroom and the teacher would have to teach multiple grades all at the same time, sometimes from first grade all the way up to eighth grade. Class sizes would range from half a dozen students to over 40, all in the same classroom. The age of the students could be as young as five and as old as 20 years old, and the class curriculum would be based only on the books that were available at the school. Could you imagine being in the same class for several years with your younger brother or sister? You get home and your little brother tells your parents you failed your spelling test or you got in trouble and you had to stay after school. Or worse yet, you got the strap. Yes, in those days, as punishment, a teacher could hit the children with a strap if they were bad. In the 1920s, teachers earned between $700 and $900 per year, and during the Great Depression, salaries dropped to around $400 per year. In small towns, the one-room schoolhouse would be furnished with some desks, a bell, a blackboard, a wood stove, and it might even have been the responsibility of one of the older boys to fill the wood or coal. And the schools usually had outdoor plumbing you know, an outhouse. And in some rural areas, there was no electricity until the 1950s. On cold mornings on the prairies, children would wear their outdoor gear and sit close to the stove until things warmed up. They didn't have ballpoint pens or felt tip pens in those days. And on cold mornings, the ink wells would even freeze up. Oh yeah, and with no indoor plumbing, that meant putting on your coat, hat, and mittens and heading out to the outhouse when nature called. Brr, if the ink froze up, then, well, we won't even go there. In addition to teaching, the teacher had other non-related job functions such as janitorial duties, keeping the school clean, sweeping and washing the floors and so on. In the prairies of Canada, they grow a lot of wheat. They also have a problem with gophers. Yeah, these little critters. They eat grasses and seeds and can easily eat 60% of their body weight each day. There could easily be 30 to 40 gophers per acre and they dig burrows and destroy crops which is costly to the farmers. During the depression, to help control the gopher problem, some Canadian provinces put bounties on gophers. They would pay one cent per gopher tail. This became a way for young boys to make extra money. And you guessed it, it was the teacher's job to complete and sign the declaration form so the boys could collect their money from the government. Boys would bring the tails to school in little paper bags and it was the teacher's job to confirm how many tails were in the bag. Some teachers never even opened the bags and threw the bags into the drawer of their desk until they could dispose of them after school. They would often just take the boys word for it as to how many tails were in the stinky bags. Yeah. If you're enjoying my stories, please remember to like and subscribe. As a small YouTuber, it really means a lot to me. It really makes my day when I see that somebody actually liked one of my videos. So I just wanted to say thanks. At the end of this video, I'm going to be telling you what I have planned in the next video. So be sure to stick around. Now let's finish laying the subfloor of our Sears Kit House miniature model.
So what the balloons have to do with Sears kit houses? Well, I'll tell you in the next video, so make sure you like and subscribe. You don't want to miss it. We'll see you in the next video.